Guys, guys, Orbital are coming out with a new album this September. This is awesome. This is awesome. Uh, by the way, why do I feel like I lost a pound? Hello everybody, welcome to Wonky Ankle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old, and today I am talking about album number 9 from Square Pusher. Hello everything. Right, finally getting back to this guy. I'm not going to bother too much with Prelude for this video, I know this discography review has been really dragging on long, but that's what you get with a back catalog this big to cover and a college schedule this tight. Thankfully I no longer have to worry about the latter, so yay! Uh, let's talk about the last Square Pusher album to make it on my favorites of all time list. Yes, this album is among the man's top tier material. It's one of the albums that I would most highly recommend for people coming into Square Pusher for the first time. The only thing that might have me hesitate at that is the fact that it's actually more accessible than he usually is on average, and it might skew people's expectations for the rest of his stuff. The guy has always had more melodic tracks with some pop sensibility before, like My Red Hot Car, Beep Street, Tomorrow World, Iambic 5 and 9 Poetry, uh, later Store Eyeglass. Varying amounts of pop sensibility there, but this is the only album of his that primarily focuses on his more melodic material. And this guy is really dang good at it when he wants to be. Now, to be honest, when I came back to this album for the review initially, I did have a couple of issues and almost ranked Ultra Visitor higher. I think that album comes together as a whole better. Hello Everything is a couple of tracks that don't totally fit within the track listing, and a couple of tracks that just kinda resort to your typical Amen breaks for the percussion. It ain't a perfect album, that's for sure. But something sort of dawned on me while I was listening to it and trying to pick out favorites, and the main thing is that this album has no bad songs on it. Not one. Even the ones that don't totally fit have their own appeal. That's what I think edges this one over Ultra Visitor. That album had that long stretch of seven tracks in the middle that I was less enthusiastic about. This one, I could have basically put every track in the favorite section if I wanted to. So, uh, let's go down track by track. The album starts out with Hello Meow, which immediately sets itself apart with its quirkier synth choices, its bright melodic vibe with even some bell accompaniment, which I'm always into. Let's you know this isn't the same square pusher you're used to, except in a good way. And more importantly, it's a track that gets stuck in your head and stays there. Easily the best hook on the entire album, and maybe even the catchiest track he's ever written. This is a track that I could hum or whistle a tune to while I have a completely different track stuck in my head. It is that potent. <laughs> Yeah, oh, basically only my red hot car rivals this one in pure catchiness. Well, anyway, we move on to theme from Sprite, which some people have said, oh, that's that's named after the soft drinks. It sounds like a commercial jingle, but I wouldn't really agree. I mean, it does sound like some kind of uh, soundtrack piece and a pretty bright melodic one, so it could theoretically work in a commercial, but it's still pretty moody and jazzy on top of that, and it doesn't directly bring commercials to mind when I hear it. From there, we move on to Bubble Life, which fittingly has a lot of watery synth effects that sound like synthetic bubbling and sloshing, while a synth bass buzzes underneath. And you get some Jenkinson bass solos and other bubbly melodies accompanying it. But again, it does have a, like an interesting moodiness to it. It doesn't feel like he's just doing this stuff as a joke. D despite the, <laughs> the the bubble sound effects. I mean, it does... He, he is, for the most part, taking this more accessible sound pretty seriously. We then move on to Planetarium, which, for the most part, covers itself in Amen Breaks, but involves a hairy melody that comes pretty close to Tomorrow World, actually. Probably the second catchiest track on here. <laughs> There's not a lot to it, but it's still consistently engaging. But right after that we get the first track which does not fit on this album, like at all. Vacuum Garden is an entirely atonal ambient track, extremely minimalistic with no real instrumental texture and sounds like a creepy, empty space where another song was supposed to go. But there is something about it that I can't quite put my finger on. I almost never actually skip it, and I honestly have no idea why. It should kill the mood of this 
otherwise bright and colorful and melodic album, but it, it doesn't. Well, I suppose it is surrounded by two of the darker and moodier tracks on here. Because on the other side, you got uh, Circle Wave 2. This the sequel of sorts to the similarly titled track from Ultra Visitor, obviously. Now, the regular Circle Wave, I think, is a more memorable track overall. I remember the tune to that one better, but this one seems to have more texture. It's more free-flowing. It's one of the more emotional moments on this thing. All its freeform acoustic textures work quite well on their own merit. And then Kronecker King is kind of an interlude that sounds like it was the beginning of a demo for this album. Same melodic vibe at all, but after like, after 48 seconds, it just kind of glitches out and dies. I mean, again, it's pleasant, I don't skip it, but it doesn't really add to the album in any way. But then we got a series of three similar sounding tracks, which all have a very similar vibe and almost run together. Uh, Rotate Electrolyte takes a while to get going after a while of drum machine solos and amen breaks. It does bring in this pretty haunting melody that continually caught my ear. It takes the track into a particularly dreamy state. And that dreamy state is continued by the next track, Welcome to Europe, which kind of brings in that quirkier synth texture that played the main melody from Hello Meow. Yet that dramatic vibe is kept intact. Some synth pads reminding me of Tundra, in fact. And then Plotinus is kind of the tetrasync of this album. Mainly in that it's a track that sticks out to me that not many people talk about. I mean, it's one of the least catchy on here, but it's easily the most complex and interesting track on here as well. Starting out with some acoustic bass playing and then eventually slipping into the bright and melodic vibe of the rest of the album. And it seems to have everything from noisy, acid-esque breakdowns to spooky, melodic sections to including more of Jenkinson's acoustic accompaniment. When that bass comes back in a little before the five minute mark, it is simply awesome. And it even brings in this harsh, almost like metal scratching noise near the end that isn't grating or annoying, even helps enhance the vibe of the track, and every time it's just like, whoa, yeah. Certainly not as epic as Tetrasync, but it's kind of like an unspoken centerpiece of the album. So much interesting stuff to talk about there. Okay, so then we got the last two tracks. So there's the modern bass guitar, and uh, you know how I said in my review of Do You Know Square Pusher, that's the bass line to the track and Strum Feck 4 sounded really familiar? This is why. This track sounds extremely similar from the almost 8-bit bass line, which is even in the same key as Amstrom Feck 4, plays almost the same notes, but not quite, and accompanied by similarly dense percussion patterns in the same tempo. We're, we're basically talking Pendulum Slam and Salt in the Wounds levels of similarity here. And I think this track manages to top it by a little. Mainly by being longer and having more substance, goes on a couple of other unrelated tangents that sets the track apart, and it's a little easier to listen to as well. Anstrom Feck 4 had the benefit of being on an album that did not really have much that stood out among his catalog in general, and the bass line alone made it stick out. But now you got this track which is basically the same except upgraded. <laughs> Finally, the album ends with Orient Orange, which is a really strange way to finish this album. Yeah, this is the other track on here that sticks out like a sore thumb. It's again this very dark and minimalistic, almost Pink Floyd-esque ambient track. Much like Mutilation Colony from Do You Know Square Pusher. Obviously, there's more texture here than in Vacuum Garden. There's extremely slow and freeform drumming and atonal whistling sounds in the background. And there's even some spooky chord progressions coming in in parts. The atmosphere is honestly excellently done. Now, I wouldn't say this is the upgraded version of Mutilation Colony, though. Uh, that track felt like it had more going on and progressed more. But this is quite the harrowing and effective closer, even if it does not particularly match the tone of the rest of the album. Now, before I talk about Hello Everything overall, I gotta discuss the bonus tracks. Yes, this album also has Japanese exclusive bonus tracks as well, just like Feed Me Weird Things. The main album has two bonus tracks taken from the Welcome to Europe EP, being Hanningfield Window, which is another bright and melodic track that matches the tone for of the rest of the album and Exciton, which is this much more abrasive rock tune combined with his usual drum and bass style, 
and is in no way foreshadowing for his next album, Just a Souvenir. Both tracks are pretty good, though like the Feed Me Weird Things bonus tracks, I don't have them on my version of the album and I don't have the same attachment to them as other tracks on here. But there's more, the Japanese version also comes with an entire bonus EP called Vacuum Tracks. Five tracks which I guess are to make up for Vacuum Garden sounding so very out of place on this album. This EP follows the same style as Vacuum Garden, very minimalistic, atonal, ambient pieces with not the slightest bit of texture or pulse at all. Well, the first one for 4026 Melt 1 has a bit of movement, but there's not much. I know I said I didn't mind Vacuum Garden, but I don't think I need an entire EP's worth of that kind of material. We, <laughs> probably not gonna listen to that one again. But finally, uh, let's talk about how I feel on he Hello Everything as a whole. Obviously it's not perfect, there are tracks that don't feel at home on this track listing, and the production as a whole is a step down from Ultra Visitor. Not quite as impressive, sounds cheaper sometimes, like Feed Me Weird Things did. But they're all really minor nitpicks I have on an otherwise really solid album here. The melodies here are all excellent, there's no track on here that I feel takes away from the album as a whole. Not even Vacuum Garden, even if it probably should. And it's just such a pleasurable listen from start to finish that's never boring. It has so many tracks that I consider among the best that Square Pusher has ever done, and it is undoubtedly top tier material for the guy. Definitely check this out if you haven't already. Maybe even buy the CD to support the dude, like I have. Oh, crap. I hate the CDs. Got the... It does not really lock in like that. But I'm overall feeling an 8.7 out of 10. But of course, it's just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. So leave comments in the comment thing down there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.